So this is an older R7-1700. This is first gen Ryzen. And I built this system back in 2017. We have the R7-1700. I have the optical drive, a 3.5 inch hard disk drive. This is a GTX 980, a EVGA Supernova G3 550 watt power supply. And I have an ADATA NVMe 8200 one terabyte drive behind the graphics card here. So in other videos, you might have also seen where I would substitute this graphics card with a GTX 1070, and I also have an MSI GTX 1080 Ti Duke. And they all ran perfectly fine on this EVGA 550 watt power supply because it's a good quality power supply. But I'm actually going to be not only upgrading the processor, from an R7 1700 to a R7 5700X, I'm also going to be upgrading the graphics card and we're going to be going from this one we have here to a RTX 3070 Ti, which draws about 40 to 50 watts more than my MSI GTX 1080 Ti Duke. And because of that reason, I'm going to be swapping out this power supply with a 650 watt. And I know this is going to work out, even though they recommend a 750 watt power supply. They do recommendations based on that for multiple reasons. Because A, you could be, you could be having a processor in here that draws way more power than the 65 watt TDP chip that I've been using for both the first gen and the last gen. And also, many systems do not have good quality power supplies like these. So here are the parts we're going to be using. This is the power supply unit I was telling you about before, 650 watts, the same model. It's just basically 100 more watts, takes the same exact cables. And because this is going to be a future capture rig, this is only temporary for my video editing because I don't know if you, you uh, were looking at the past couple of videos, but I was supposed to do a benchmark on a CPU cooler for an Intel rig, and I found out that that rig was not stable, so I need to get this system back up and running. So we have the NFS12A. These are airflow focused fans. I'm gonna be putting one in the front and then one in the rear for exhaust. And for the CPU cooler that's gonna be dissipating heat from the 5700X is going to be the NH-U12S SE-AM4 and this is going to be overkill but it's going to run real quiet and that's exactly what I want. So one of the first things you're going to want to do is confirm what BIOS version you have for your motherboard. In my case I have a MSI B350M bazooka so I'm going to go ahead and go to the MSI site for that specific motherboard and then you want to go and click on drivers and downloads. Looks like it already went there. And we're on BIOS. The latest BIOS is going to be the one that came out on July 15th, 2022. And they only released this BIOS for the new 5000 series processors. So I'm going to go ahead and download that. And I already know that I have to update the BIOS, so I'm going to go ahead and put this on a flash drive, this download, so that I can plug it into the motherboard and ultimately use that flash drive to update the BIOS on the motherboard. Is you actually want to click on compatibility, and we can see here I'm going to be using the 5700X, and it's listed here as compatible via the latest beta BIOS and that's exactly what we just downloaded. Alright so the next thing you're going to want to do is turn on your computer and when you see this splash screen come up just hit the delete key to get into the BIOS. There you go now we're into the BIOS. The next thing you want to do is cursor down to M flash. It's going to reboot and go into M flash. Now see, you'll, you'll see right here that my flash drive is showing up and you can actually see the BIOS version 
file that is on the flash drive right here. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into the drive, which is in my case is the Kingston Data Traveler, and you're going to go into the folder and select the file. Here's my file right here, which is the updated BIOS. We're going to hit enter. It's going to ask you, are you sure you want to select this file? Go ahead and hit yes. And there you go. The BIOS is currently updating. Wow, the BIOS looks totally different. Motherboard manufacturers in general, um, with all the available SKUs that should be usable for the AM4 socket, there's a whole list of them. And you fill up this BIOS chip really quick. So I think this is kind of interesting. This, I, I wonder if they're watering down this BIOS just to make it look simple and plain for the sake of space on the BIOS chip. There's the BIOS version right here. That's the BIOS version. Looks like we're good. Actually, let's check something real quick here. I want to make sure my XMP profile is still enabled because sometimes it defaults when you update your BIOS. Yeah, see, look, AXMP is disabled. Profile 1 is 2933. We don't want that then. We want profile 2, which is 3200 megahertz. Profile 2. Yeah, CD RAM frequency changed to 3200 megahertz. What if I change it back just to check? Yeah, 2933. So we're going to go with profile 2. I think it's F10. Save configuration. Alright, here's the 5700X. Let's go ahead and get it unboxed. I am so excited that they ended up doing BIOS updates for this because this is going to make it so I, this computer is essentially brand new. Here's the processor. I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, old one out. Right here's the little arrow. Just sets right in. So here's the uh, front intake fan. I'm going to put in the noise reduction adapter, which is going to lower the RPM speed or the power to the fan slightly. And it's only going to be like a negligible difference when it comes to uh, thermals.
So off camera, I actually rotated this counterclockwise again and it just used up even more slack to look neater. So I kind of like that. All right, so here's the finished product. I put those noise reduction adapters on everything, the CPU cooler, the exhaust, and the intake. So yeah, I mean, I normally don't go with this color brown, you know, with all these fans with the Noctua Brown, but like th there's no tempered side glass panel on this, so you're not even really gonna be able to see anything. I just want performance, I want acoustics to be in check, and this is strictly utilitarian, maybe a little bit of gaming on the side, so I can just get video editing done for this channel, and that's gonna allow me to free up that other machine to figure out what's going on and why I can't run Cinebench or Prime95 when stress testing the CPU. The next step is I'm gonna take out the power supply right here, we're going to replace it with a 650 watt. Lastly, I'm going to be installing the graphics card, which is going to be the RTX 3070 Ti ASUS Tough Gaming. So this right here is the ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 3070 Ti. You can check out an unboxing and installation video in the upper right hand corner of the screen here. And what we're going to be doing next is installing it into this case. And why I really like this graphics card for this case is because, like I said before, there is no tempered side glass panel. The only RGB is like right here. So this is kind of minimalistic RGB setup. All right, the graphics card is installed. New power supply, well not new, but 650 watt power supply. Intake fan, CPU cooler, 5700X, exhaust fan. If I don't say so myself, the system is ready to go.